<laughs> well, first off, um, my name's Utah. I'm here with for Fangoria. Um, and I just want to say how much I really enjoyed this uh, film. And what I'd like to know, because I was reading more about this as myself, as um, a Japanese American in the Midwest, <laughs> yeah, it was. What, what is it um, about uh, portraying these roles or being in this industry? Because as a kid, I never saw myself on screen. So to see a movie called Unseen, but to be able to see myself was just a pleasure. Ooh, the madness of that. Love that. Oh my goodness. Um, yes, Midwest Asians. You know, as little as Asians we see represented, uh, the Midwest and the South Asians are, at least, I think, even less uh, visible. There's a lot of coastal Asian stories, but uh, we are a little bit invisible. That's why I was really excited to make sure that uh, uh, Emily was from Michigan. Somebody was from, you know, that part of the country. Um, but yeah, grew up never seeing myself. You know, I saw myself in Japanese media, but, you know, I came to North America being like, this is where, you know, this is where white people are on screen, you know, and I just accepted that as like a, as a truth as when I was younger. Um, but yeah, I know uh, it, it was like a wonderful little miracle that again, I got to have two Japanese American women as leads. Cause I really was, we were open, you know, we were open ethnicity casting and um, it really was this like little surprise that the best people for this job again, ended up being, Japanese American and um it's really cool to kind of spread uh who gets to be heroes on screen um especially in the horror genre um yeah it's really cool um so what I'd love to know then you know another thing I really enjoy the fact that sometimes uh even at your lowest you could still be you know so important to somebody else and I really enjoyed that about the connection so um Jolene I want to know how you felt about portraying that role um especially uh, with Missy Piles banging on that um <laughs> who, who was it who was a Missy Pyle what what was she doing <laughs> um uh, playing Sam was cathartic for me because I had postpartum depression after having my daughter. So I sat in 18 months of feeling hopeless, uh, just heavy, dark, just wanting things to end and not understanding, especially when it was supposed to be a joyful time. Um, and so I got to tap back into that. Um, having underlying anxiety just was cherry on top um, for me. But yeah, it just shows that as, as worthless as you might feel, you are of value to someone somewhere. Um, yeah, and it, it just takes a stranger to point that out to you. I don't know. I No, I, I really, again, I think mental health is very important, and I, I really appreciated that aspect of in this story. But then I also really, um, I have to also commend uh, Midori, your character as well, in the, just <laughs> the fear that she's going through, but can still tell stories of her childhood and maybe crack a few jokes. Mm -hmm. I'm just curious, when you're under pressure, do you sometimes do that? Because I know I do. <laughs> the majority of time in my life, absolutely not. Um, I have I, I have a chaotic energy that as I've gotten older, I'm really trying to harness. And sometimes I'm more successful than others. Um, easily stressed out. Like there is something wrong with my adrenal glands because one thing falls off the counter. I'm like, oh, my. <laughs> um, but in this one thing that I've had in my life, and I've tried to now expand that to other aspects of my life, because I want to be a grounded person in this world who can spread that. Um, acting for me has always been this place of like this arena. I don't know why, I don't know how, but I just can jump in and, and feel really like, um, you know, it, it, sets are very, very panicky places in a lot of ways, depending on what you're working on, especially in TV where it's like time, time, time. And there's this thing that comes inside me and I just feel like I'm I'm in, in something and I feel like I can make decisions and I can do my job and I can say my words. And, and so I think that is my kind of parallel to, to Emily. Um, and also when I look at back at like major crises in my family, you know, it's funny how we morph into who we need to be 
but for certain situations day to day, I'm a little like, ah, but like, you know, in my family, I think there's been definitely moments where I've had to be kind of the caretaker or whatever. And somehow it happens somehow it, it comes in. So, um, uh, yeah, being able to be in a high level of stress and also be highly efficient, um, was a really cool track to play. And something that Yoko would always encourage me about is like keeping me in this lane of, of, of like, you know, I'm a doctor. I know how to handle stress when I get cut. I can even tell like what kind of cut that is. And I'm, I am a person who could without having to work my classes probably handle this situation. So it was really cool to play both those things. And I think aspirational really. I I love that. And I think one of the other great things is just, um, you know, the courage both your characters had, because again, you know, like you said, you were dependent upon somebody else to be in your eyes. And then, you know, we've got poor Sam is just being terrorized by these customers, which if we've all worked retail, we just know that's hell. Poor Sam, poor Sam. I mean, Carol coming in and, and just, pointing guns at her and calling her all the names. Um, yeah. Oh, oh. It was, it was, it's funny because it's 2023. You don't think that because I'm like, man, this is a very exaggerated character of when she played uh, somebody in bringing down the house. And she was like, I do tie bow. If you remember that scene with Queen Latifah. I was like, I do. But, but this is was like, this is, yeah, no, this is, I could see this happening. Somebody just going, nuts like that we all know this person yes it's yeah and so to see your character handle that stress was um just incredible especially I really enjoy you know in this day and age to being able to be on the phone and look up on YouTube like how to get out of certain things Sergey 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 I was like it was gay, smart. But I think the only reason Sam could have the power to stand up to her was because she had so much care and connection with Emily that she was willing to risk it all. She didn't have anything in her life before that that she was willing to risk it all for. So when Emily came in, that's what gave her the catalyst to move forward and do what she needed to do. I... I, I really do. I enjoyed that story. The I, I loved how, again, Sam is going through that, but then you've got Emily going through this journey of her own where I really appreciated, Yoko, how you gave us that sometimes when we were seeing through Sam's, or I'm sorry, through Emily's eyes or lack thereof. And I really enjoyed being put in that position. And so I just mm-hmm. wanted to know telling that part of the story or just doing some of those um, intense uh sequences yeah you know from the very beginning it was really important for me to utilize every cinematic tool I had you know whether it's the you know focal length or whether it's yeah the camera movements or the editing or the split screen or the match cuts everything in my toolbox to put the viewer in both of these characters subjective emotional experience whether it's literally seen through Emily's eyes or whether it's, you know, the kind of crazy panicky, you know, whip zooms that we get into when we get into the gas station and everybody trying to attack Jolene. Um, I just wanted to make sure that you felt like you were in that, you know, gas station cage with Sam and you were in, you know, Emily's shoes running through the forest, unable to see. And that was what was going to make this film successful was that, again, these two amazing people giving amazing performances and then me telling the story and utilizing their performances to just like transport you into their experience. And she slaughtered it. She slaughtered it. Oh, I, my heart rate. Like, I'll, I'll just go ahead and send you my my therapy bills later because yeah. I, I, I really, again, the tension just kept building and building and it was a different type of tension depending um, whose story you were seeing it through. And so I really just, again, I, I, I appreciated that. Um, I think with, you know, just my final question, just because uh, horror has been really great as of late, but even more so, I think we're starting to see more um, female centric stories, which makes me happy and just to be championed because, again, it's 
we know the the landscape of film. And so I'd like to know what it's like being in that role and to kind of be a badass and take charge. I mean, all I have to say about this is like, I go back to Yoko, like, um, you know, we, it's such a tough conversation with diversity and everything, because sometimes the way it's talked about, it gets so diluted and misconstrued and we're not really, anyway, but you have someone like Yoko with such a clear and specific vision that like, it's so sad to think that that this could be left out of the world. And yet for years and years, someone like her would be left out from American, you know, the playground. And and I know that. And and then, you know, I mean, Yoko, like her vision, she came in and she was very open to us, but she was like, hey, I'm having two villains. They're going to be larger than life. You guys got to be grounded. Got it. Got it. Like all we were working so fast. And yet she all of the shots are so. I mean, she managed stylistically to do that. So all I have to say is like, like when we talk about diversity, it's like, well, that would be so sad to not have this amazing creator be able to, to, to contribute to the filmmaking landscape. And I hope it's the first of many. And I'm, just, I'm happy that we all get to be here, honestly. Me too. Yeah. For me, it's just like, I think especially in, you know, genre films, um, you know, doors are being opened for all kinds of storytellers. And um, it's exciting to be able to tell stories just authentically through our lens, you know, and, and they will naturally become, um, you know, centering marginalized people just because that's our background. But you know, I mean, there has been, you know, horror that centered female characters, but they haven't necessarily been made by female filmmakers or writers. So, you know, you, you may have had Sig Sigourney Weaver and Alien, and like, I love that character, I love that movie, but, you know, it th does it have the nuance of being a vulnerable and strong, uh, you know, woman? Not necessarily, you know, she's a badass hero, but I think now you're going to start to see more complicated and interesting and layered and, and conflicted um, characters, again, as we get to try to start to tell our own stories. I just want to say Yoko is the OG baddie that made this movie what it is. And I cannot wait to see the opportunities that come her way after this and what she does with it. I am a giant Yoko Okamura fan um, and she's just inspirational and, and I don't know. I, just I mean, I want to see more horror from you. Absolutely. You nailed Yay. it because I believe this was also your directorial, de directorial debut feature too. Yes, first one, first one, first baby. I mean, let alone being able to get that opportunity, but then kill it. Oh my, I, I just, kudos. It, it I truly, oh. with, no joke, I've already watched this film five times because I wanted to make sure what? I was prepared. But also I, I loved the pacing. I think you both killed it in the acting. And there was just certain things that I could relate each time I watched it. Because again, the childhood story, while funny, I was like, I can, I have my own story of that. And I was like, absolutely, like, y'all just nailed it with this film. And so I can't wait for everybody else to see it. <laughs> <laughs>